They gather around the smelting point as the amalgam is reduced into a button of almost pure gold. After hauling 10 tons of rock from underground for over two weeks, this is the moment of truth for artisanal miners. There is no greater anticipation. Was this gruesome process worth it? This is about survival, whatever the cost. This is the Zimbabwe Gold Rush. Like millions of people across the world, many Zimbabweans depend on artisanal and small-scale mining for their survival. Zimbabwe is well endowed with many mineral deposits. It is estimated the country has around 60 types of minerals. Gold reserves are estimated at 84 million tons at an average grade of 4.9 grams per ton and gold mining is a significant part of the mining sector. In 2016, gold mining by both large-scale miners and artisanal and small-scale miners contributed 2.6% of the country's gross domestic product. Nearly 500,000 people are estimated to work in small-scale gold mining operations. In 2017, they were responsible for nearly half of the 24.8 tons of gold produced. The sector has also received considerable government backing through various financing initiatives and incentives in line with His Excellency's vision to be an upper middle class economy by 2030. In general, gold is the highest foreign currency earner for the country. Then in terms of production, the small scale miners have gone up due to their numbers. We used to have the large scale miners being more than 50 contributing more than 50 percent, but now it's the other way. The small scale miners are contributing more than 50 percent of the pro total production. Artisanal and small scale mining has experienced tremendous growth in recent years due to the increase in value of mineral prices. Many have also left agriculture-based livelihoods as a result of unreliable rainfall caused by climate change. In areas like Makaha in Mudzi district, communities have literally turned their backyards into gold mines. This work, however, comes at a cost. Compared to the sophisticated equipment used in large-scale mining, Artisanal and small-scale miners rely on rudimentary tools. As a result, mining activities are typically highly mobile and labor-intensive. The marginal small deposits, which occur near the surface, are usually exhausted after only a few years. Working in underground shafts is hard. They can spend 10 hours a day, sometimes even more driving the gold belt and sending the ore to the ground using buckets hoisted by a rope and manual winch system. Isisu kumain kwe edu tosha ndisa inonzi pick and shovel, meaning guti ifo shoro ne pick. Kana tichisha ndisa pick and shovel, tino wanza kuita one week. Pa one week izozo, tino wanza kuburisa 20 tons. Artisanal mining is generally pursued to complement insufficient household income, especially in communities where alternative employment is hard to come by.
We are moving. You take teenagers to because of the highly informalized operations, established environmental, health and safety standards and practices are often not employed. As a result, socio-economic, health and environmental challenges have emerged, trapping artisanal miners in a never-ending cycle of poverty and community impoverishment. Some of them, they don't have the finance to, to get the right equipment, the right uh, things to use for mining. For example, like uh, I said, PPE, they need that. And also some of them, so that they can't afford, but because they just don't know and understand why we are supposed to put on that PPE. They don't know that we are protecting ourselves. There is also a problem of how to handle dangerous chemicals like mercury. They just use their bare hands and also burning that mercury in a corner where the, the ventilation is so bad that it ends up just in inhaling all the, the mercury vapor. Danger, go on this. At least three to four meters. Ne peak, some peak is on for sure. There is raw. And the part danger, pa, mungo zio zinu sina kugadzi zio zio kana kana. You kumbar no kwa sango wira ushe. Ofa go ofa kana ukwa. Kana dombo ku vam top. You kwa sango kuwe ukwa. Plus, pa three pa njia safety. Mwana mbizi naka figures. Ndo zio tika nda ba mare. Because of exploration processes in large-scale mining operations, locating mineral deposits is largely more reliable and accurate. Artisanal miners, on the other hand, use trial and error and are more ad hoc as they rely on copper wires to locate mineralized deposits. As a result, their operations are characterized by low mineral recovery, investment losses, and greater environmental degradation. about <laughs> Then you are laying a vampa, we and Zibem L, also Ivampa. So then Mount Figalapole Pant, Yavula, Iwale, Ibujang, Sapole, which is a person figure of the pant. Then you now cross my little pant, Yavila position, also in your services, who are the pant, the lap of the record. Artisanal minds do not mind about the environment, they degrade the trees they uproot. Whatever they find on their course, as long as they want to get their minerals, they will destroy. Shurubi, being mountainous, is a source of rivers. They go for alluvial. Now it's no longer alluvial mining. It's a river panning. Such activities, they've depreciated the value of the water. They also use mercury to purify or to trap their gold. And as such, talking about environment, water being an environmental component, the level of depreciation, the water is, is no longer suitable or user-friendly, it's no longer consumable. Mining is one of the biggest sources of mercury released in the air and environment. According to the Minamata Convention, artisanal and small-scale miners released 1,400 tons of mercury in 2011. Mercury is also a protector. We have to protect it. 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 
e tongo iswina tichi iswina ipapo tenda yono piswa kupiswa uko kunonzi ku cutting torch kana kupisa nemoto patino kwesha tinoisa mavhu serengende redu nedo ombora to shanisa kuti hunyu pesa mvura mavhu ne make you ne safe ne soup tichi kwesha tichikatapedza kwesha kuso yoshina gurukirawo Mercury is relatively cheap and quick to use in capturing the fine gold in the extraction process. Mercury is added to crushed ore and it combines with the fine gold particles to form an amalgam. When the amalgam is heated, mercury evaporates into the air and a porous sponge gold product remains. The miners then sell this onto Fidelity refiners and printers the country's sole buyer of gold pane nzimbo ri paduze apa i agent ye fidelity ndivo patinoyendesa gori direct rapera tono ritengesa ikoko tawa na chinonzi ma returns ndiwa tinozendesa ku ministry of mines the use of hazardous substances such as mercury zinc vapor and cyanide in mining is a health risk to miners and their communities Shakanza kuti mercury inokuvadza kuvanhukadzi kuchibereka nevanhu rumu. Paine ma effects akaona muutano wedu. Zvokuti kana ari munhu anoka anoka tanga kuti muona kutanga kuita netemwa achibvundira kuti unoti affectwa nechi isine mercury. Saka siri kutozvika kuti ishandisa asi kuti hapana zvokuda kuanza ramisa vana. In areas with artisanal mining activities, streams and rivers often become polluted and knowingly making the water unsafe for drinking for both humans and livestock it also affects fish stocks which the communities rely on for food you find there is a lot of use of mercury in the artisanal mining sector and that leads to pollution of 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 of, of water contamination of water and in that sense what we are saying mercury is one chemical that might is not very easy to detect but it has long term ramifications to both the people and the wild animals so those are some of the things that come into being when water gets polluted by chemicals that are used uh, during uh, processing of the ore Mercury is used more in hard rock gold mining than in alluvial gold mining but resulting in environmental pollution in both cases. Mercury is among the top 10 chemicals of major public concern causing irreversible brain damage. This is even more potent because its consequences are usually not immediate and only manifest when it is too late. The mercury that's used by the Uh, artisanal miners is elementary um, mercury which is uh, in the inorganic form uh, of mercury this inorganic form of mercury um, they hand during the handling uh, of it uh, when they mix the um, uh, mercury and the sands to make the amalgam there's quite a bit of um, handling that occurs there and when they heat the amalgam vapor is formed which then they inhale at times in very large quantities um, this then is the way that most of the uh, inorganic form of mercury is um, enters into the body through inhalation mercury poisoning affects the brain and nervous digestive and immune systems as well as lungs kidneys skin and eyes so when mercury gets into the body um there is very high affinity uh, of uh, mercury to your brain people working in artisanal mining and using mercury are the most directly and seriously affected since they are exposed to both occupational mercury poisoning and methyl mercury poisoning through the food chain most of the symptoms that people will present with uh, when they have mercury poisoning is when they have tremors um that we have uh, tremors which are fine interrupted with very coarse tremors where a person is just shaking apa basically ndikunzwa kupera simba nekuvhangwa pauro nemudumbu nema nema backbones msana kudedera ndotodedera especially my hands ana asina simba then my joints ana achi gurika gurika kupera pa
Mercury is also difficult to contain and can be toxic at even very small doses. It can be transported long distances by air or water, poisoning the soil and waterways, and eventually making its way into the food chain. Mercury is not a good thing, it 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 is not a good the burning of amalgam to separate mercury and gold usually takes place at the mining site and in processing centers. However, some artisanal miners choose to do it in their homes and backyards, putting their health, families and communities at risk of mercury poisoning when protective equipment is not used. In addition, the lack of proper personal protective equipment, PPE, means miners inhale dust and fine particles as they mine. This can cause respiratory diseases such as silicosis and pneumoconiosis in men and women and in the children who often accompany their parents. Cyanide is usually used in large-scale mining operations but is increasingly used in artisanal and small-scale mining because it can recover more gold than mercury amalgamation. Cyanidation is more cost-effective and efficient. Cyanidation is often used to process the residual gold from tailings after mercury has been used. Mixed together, mercury cyanide can bioaccumulate in aquatic organisms, resulting in fish with high levels of mercury contamination. This mercury cyanide complex can also carry mercury further than it would go on its own. However, cyanidation is still generally costlier than mercury amalgamation for most artisanal mining sites and requires more knowledge and technical training in handling it. The majority of artisanal and small-scale miners operate informally and illegally without the requisite licenses and permits required by law. Mining law in Zimbabwe is governed by the 1961 Mines and Mineral Act, which permits any individual, provided they are a permanent resident of Zimbabwe, to apply for a mining license. Once one secures a mining certificate or a license from Minister of Mines, then he is qualified to be called a miner according to the Mines and Minerals Act. As one go my proquash, I think what's zero struggle for life to know. My paper was quite under Maria Catuji, Umawan, Dumona said, Imagine, he was in two tens of the room. Do you want to see Marash? Saka no one don't want to imagine go eat a good wind of Goya, Sron and Agri. Now good, can I go a kit in a gosh, go moon zing and zing, but in Indian Ripperis. Artisanal mining is also often poorly regulated by local authorities due to an absence of regulatory framework, a lack of enforcement capacity, or corruption. As a result, artisanal mining is often associated with social conflict, human and labor rights violations, and environmental degradation. Paper Town on itself sits over Tanil. Globe and Phonics Mine, which stretches for about two or three kilometers across town, and the town itself sits over a tunnel. It's a time bomb. Illegal miners in Pepe has, have got the belief that sewage water has got high affinity to attract gold. When they are doing their panning, they want sewage water to wash their all their stuff and many a times Pepe city council is crying as their sewer pipes are being vandalized now and again especially around the primrose area there is commonly lack of adequate health and safety safeguards and there are often a high number of fatalities and injuries in the sector Poor social and environmental practices often negatively impact on local communities. As of uh, end of October this year, from January up to, uh, up to 30th, 30th, 30th of October, 
we had lost about 118 small scale miners and artisanal miners from different day accidents. Some are gassing accidents from the gases that are, are produced when you blast or the gases that are inherent underground. Then we also have some rock for a good number. We lost a good number from the rock for and uh, explosives blasting uh, accidents have also been we have also had a lot of a good number there. Then uh, some of them is just the ground floor from Norway. The ground floor is because people are mining without checking whether their ground is stable enough to hold what is above them. You will find that in such communities uh, there is high prevalence of HIV, a high prevalence of TB. Also, there the is lack of access to uh, basic um, medical care, uh, no clinics. Uh, you find that uh, also in sort of trying to provide themselves with entertainment, uh, you, you find that they, most of these areas are high activities, uh, things like um, alcohol. They become a special kind of uh, a social uh, complex uh, that people really need to look at uh, and address. The sector faces many constraints, including lack of capital, as they do not have the required collateral security for bank loans, inadequate technical expertise for mining, and inefficient processing methods, leading to low recoveries. Artisanal mining requires improved environmental management, public health management, and mine safety to reduce its environmental and human costs. This would ensure that artisanal and small-scale gold mining practices are consistent with the principles of sustainable development. It is very critical at this point in time, as far as Emma's observation, that Ministry of Mines should engage its engineering department to do an integrity test of the tunnels and also to conduct an audit on the status of their pits or shafts or their mines because we realize that these illegal miners who are moving everywhere we have got no limits in terms of law and their operations they need to sensitize the people or the local authorities about the structures of their mining activities because most of these shafts were just abandoned and they were abandoned in an area where people are settled and we are afraid of risks that these have, got, have become or shall become death traps. When a large-scale mine ceases operating after the ore body is exhausted or unprofitable, it undergoes decommissioning, dismantling and rehabilitation of the land. If this approach is used for artisanal mining, there would be less scarring of the environment. Uh, Small-scale mining also has resulted in basically the, 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 the scarring of the landscape whereby we have open pits remaining and by these open pits what happens the aesthetic value of the environment is actually reduced. And when we have this reduction in the aesthetic value, so many things happen. Remember, we are a country that relies so much on tourism and the tourism is built upon aesthetic value. Now, when aesthetic value is reduced, therefore one way or the other, we are compromising our tourism potential. So that in its way is not good to the environment as it reduces that potential to attract more and more tourists. Other than that, we are also saying these open pits that uh, are left up by the small scale miners or the artisanal miners, as we did refer to them, has always brought them into conflict with the farmers. Remember, most of this mining uh, it, it happens 
in uh, arable lands in farms and what happens is that i mean the open pits that are left usually we have livestock falling into those pits uh, we have recorded fatalities farmers losing uh, livestock and obviously that now brings mining into conflict with farming which is not something that we are encouraging Artisanal mining has many associated environmental and occupational health issues, particularly when practiced informally or with limited technical and material resources. The health and well-being of miners, their family members, as well as nearby communities is often adversely affected. If you look at most of the areas that uh, people are going into mining, um, there are no developed infrastructures. There's no sewer system, there's no water. Um, most of them don't even have how proper housing uh, to, to stay in. So this has a great effect uh, on, on their health. <laughs> Governments have been working for several decades to reduce the safety, health and environmental impact of artisanal mining, particularly the use of mercury. The Environmental Management Agency and Pact Zimbabwe are introducing artisanal miners to the use of retorts to minimize exposure to mercury during the recovery process. Uh, the retort, it works like a condenser. You burn the amalgam and the mercury is, is, is heat and then it vaporizes. When it vaporizes, it is contained within the retort so that there is no escape of the vapor, so that the vapor is not breathed by anyone. And it uses water to cool, to condense that vapor. That vapor is condensed back into liquid mercury, and that liquid mercury is collected. It can actually save their mercury as well. Because we are going to the design method. You can use the retort. Do you have the next one? Mercury. <laughs> Such approaches, however, need more involvement from stakeholders on site and investment in efficient technologies that are suitable for the local context. Even though technologies exist, the challenge lies in identifying the most appropriate ones for given mining sites and demonstrating their value to miners. The Global Environment Facility the United Nations Development Program and the United Nations Industrial Development Organization began various initiatives on awareness raising and introduction of alternative technologies that reduce the impact of mercury on the environment. Recognizing the importance of artisanal miners in Zimbabwe, but also recognizing the challenges they face, uh, both in terms of their own health and safety, but also the, uh, the, the effect they're having on the environment. So really looking at can we 
can we promote, can we pilot a mercury-free mining site for artisanal gold miners that can then serve as a model for other mining sites. It's a small initiation plan, as we said, it's about $350,000 involved in this first year. Um, but we do hope that it's opening the doors, as I think other partners are also increasingly interested in, in this important sector for, for Zimbabwe. The Minamata Convention on Mercury was enacted in January 2013. It is a legally binding global instrument meant to support the reduction of mercury trade, supply and use in artisanal mining and several other sectors. Some of you will know of the history uh, behind the whole uh, debate on um, mercury internationally where there was the Minamata disaster uh, where there was a lot of uh, contamination of water in a place in Japan called Minamata, uh, where they ended up through uh, epidemiological studies seeing that the population was being affected to the effect that um, there were many children being born with uh, deformities because of mercury uh, poisoning. The Minamata Convention stipulates that all countries where artisanal mining is more than insignificant must develop a national action plan to take steps to control and reduce trade in mercury and, where feasible, eliminate its use. These measures need to promote the adoption of cleaner and mercury-free technologies by artisanal mining communities and the formalization of the sector and provide technical and financial assistance. Poor understanding of the makeup and dynamics of artisanal small-scale mining communities has led to the design of many inappropriate technologies and support services. Beyond technologies and education, it is crucial to consider the site-specific characteristics of artisanal mining and the needs of the mining community using the bottom-up approaches and to engage directly and empathetically with miners and local stakeholders to build trust. Every time, it is essential that policymakers understand the environmental and social impacts of artisanal mining for an informed new legislation. Considering the site-specific characteristics also means that any alternative should be more cost and time efficient for miners. To be successful, an integrated approach to artisanal mining formalization is needed that simultaneously addresses the key barriers associated with the sector. The approach also needs to support and incentivize miners to become formalized due to the real benefits afforded to them. Centralized processing centers are one strategy to enable alternative access to equipment and technology and promote environmental health and safety friendly operations while providing processing facilities. These centers can serve a role in providing information about environmental management. Bobby Milling Center offers services to the artisanal miners which are coming to the services of our Bobby Milling Center here. Of concern is the issue of mercury. Um, coming from a process point of view, we actually encourage uh, artisanal miners to be safety conscious when they are handling mercury. The first aspect is to make sure that the most important uh, asset within the mining sector is the person himself, the miner. So if they can take care of their health, then we are assured of sustainable mining, be it in charge of the environment or the other resources. 
While large-scale mining continues to be seen as the main contributor to gold output, its contribution has declined over time relative to artisanal mining. Artisanal mining's contribution to the economic growth can be improved by increasing the amount of gold that is traded formally. This requires improving access to and protection of mining claims for artisanal mining and establishing affordable financing and technical services like exploration, mining and mineral processing advisory services for the sector, which would improve output. The importance of gold mining to Zimbabwe's economy continues to rise, partly due to continued growth in artisanal mining. Artisanal mining makes noteworthy contributions to both economic growth and economic development. Creating an enabling environment for artisanal mining requires bold changes to laws, policies and how institutions implement these. This includes creating property rights that are suitable for artisanal mining and deregulation of gold mining in a manner that decriminalizes gold possession, improves market access and ensures that the government of Zimbabwe benefits from artisanal mining gold rush.